Well, Emily, what's on your radar? Gavin Newsom's attempt to dodge a recall bid is shaping up to be a pretty nice glimpse at how power protects power. About a month after the Democratic governor was caught breaking his own COVID restrictions to dine with lobbyists at a Michelin star restaurant, the pained pleadings of a small business owner went viral. Remember this clip? And obviously, Mayor Garcetti has approved this. Has approved this being set up for this being set up for for a movie company. I'm losing everything. Everything I own is being taken away from me. And they set up a movie company right next to my outdoor patio, which is right over here. And people wonder why I'm protesting and why I have had enough. <laughs> they have not given us money and they have shut us down. We cannot survive. My staff cannot survive. That was Angela Marsden, owner of the Pineapple Hill Saloon in Sherman Oaks. The regulations Newsom flouted in private were the source of her misery, which was not merely on her own behalf, but also on behalf of her suffering employees, as you just heard right there. Meanwhile, an NBC series was shooting next door. Now, she was not alone. As the New York Times reported in April, nearly 40,000 small businesses had closed in the state by September, more than in any other state since the pandemic began, according to a report compiled by Yelp. Half had shut permanently, according to that report, far more than the 6,400 that had closed permanently in New York. The post-pandemic lockdown autopsy gets worse for Newsom. Just two months ago, The Federalist reported that despite suffering some of the harshest COVID restrictions in the country, California remains only two spots below Florida, a state with a far higher proportion of senior residents, in its COVID fatality rate. California simultaneously ranks 48th in unemployment at a rate of 8.5 percent, according to the BLS, fueling Newsom's unpopularity. A new poll out last month shows more than 58 percent of California believe California voters believe it's time for someone new in the 2022 election. That report continued. Only 42 percent said they would vote to keep Newsom in office. And in upcoming recall, Democrats are panicked. Newsom's fortunes are looking up, though, with some polls finding increased support for the embattled governor among conflict weary, weary voters. Perhaps that's because Newsom's lockdowns weren't all that bad for everyone in the Golden State. Newsom, you might remember, didn't just bend the rules for himself and his lobbyist friends. He declared the film and TV industry, quote, essential, allowing them to continue production throughout the pandemic, while others who could have operated at higher levels safely were shut down. As Lee Fang reported in The Intercept last year, the entertainment industry deployed an army of lobbyists, nearly tripling its spending on lobbying in 2020. Quote, Warner Brothers, for instance, spent $22,500 earlier this year on lobbyists contacting the governor's office for COVID outreach TV film and TV film production, according to a disclosure. The Motion Picture Association spent $45,000 on lobbyists to shape the COVID-19 reopening of film, t and film and TV sector. Paramount Pictures has spent at least $85,000 this year on the essential business rules developed by state agencies in California, Fang wrote. There it is. It's all right there. It worked. Now, with the pandemic fading into the background and a recall threat looming, the industry is paying Newsom back. In a Monday report for Real Clear Politics, Susan Crabtree noted that as mega donors and special interest groups cut big checks to keep the governor in office, some of those donations, especially those from Hollywood, are drawing new scrutiny. Paramount Pictures this week provided $40,000 to the anti-recall effort, Crabtree reported. That check follows a $3 million infusion in late May from Netflix CEO Reed Hastings, the most from any single donor. But it gets worse. 
The Netflix connection also figures into Newsom's infamous French laundry incident last fall, which helped fuel the early recall campaign, Crabtree wrote. Remember, that was the Michelin star restaurant we mentioned earlier. When the governor was spotted at the opulent restaurant amid heightened COVID restrictions, he was celebrating the birthday of longtime friend Jason Kinney, who lobbies for Netflix, one of many clients pressing for exemptions from lockdowns, Crabtree wrote. In addition to Hastings, I checked this yesterday, Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams have both made donations to Newsom's 2022 campaign in recent days, according to California's donations database. This, by the way, is the same sanctimonious industry that's lecturing us while bending over backwards to appease the genocidal Chinese Communist Party for the sake of making an extra buck. They're buying off politicians, and politicians are eager to be bought at our expense. Ryan, <laughs> Gavin Newsom is so shameless and brazen about his corruption. I mean, this is the transactional nature of his relationship with the film industry is gross, but it's especially gross when you consider exactly how transactional it was over the course of the COVID lockdowns. He had some of the strictest COVID lockdowns in the country. They were some of the least effective COVID lockdowns in the country based on what we know about the fatality rate in his state. And at the same time, you have Netflix lobbyists pouring money into his campaign campaign coffers now lobbying him um, over the course of the pandemic and continuing to film that viral video of Angela Marsden. That was an NBC, so Comcast show that was being shot right next door. It, can it get any more shameless? Well, I loved the Intercept reporting that you cited. In yes. Thank you, thank you for doing that. And that was, that was a great Lee Fon story about, you know, really following the money between the, the film industry and, and Newsom, and you know, it, it works on that individual level, but also structurally, the, the Democratic Party in California is very, is very tied to the film industry. And so what the film industry asks for, independent of, of contributions, is gonna carry a lot more weight than what small business owners ask for. And, and in particular, small business owners in, in California are linked to the fading, they've linked their fortunes to the fading Republican uh, Party there. Whereas as Democrats have gotten uh, in, increasingly popular among suburban educated voters, uh, there's a, there's a linkage there too, both structural as well as campaign contributions, because they're they're the, you know the, the the donations from those individual people fund California uh, Democrats, and they were very uh, supportive of these strict lockdowns. Right. And so all all of these things co coalesced to, coalesced to create this this condition where you had one of the worst responses to to COVID anywhere in the country. And as you said, it, it didn't actually produce uh, the outcome that you would hope from it. If, if you had done all of this and you had come out with the best outcomes in the country. Exactly. All right, then, then let's talk about that. Instead, you're right in line with Florida. F everybody says of Florida, okay, well, it's sunny down there. People are outdoors. Uh, you know, vitamin, vit vitamin D is, you know, is extremely, um, you know, benef beneficial uh, as well as just being outdoors makes it difficult. Um, to transmit the, the virus. And so you wound up basically with the same outcomes in, in Florida and, and California with a much higher unemployment rate in California than in Florida. But I wonder how, I, I, I'm curious what you think about this. I feel like people's desire to forget that COVID ever happened <laughs> will be a gift to Newsom. Oh yeah. That, that people are gonna say, you know what? I did hate how that unfolded but let's just move on. Yeah, I think that's why we're starting to see his numbers tick upwards. Mm -hmm. Like they were pretty bad a couple of months back when we were still feeling like, you know, everything was still pretty shut mm -hmm. down. His numbers were still, they, they weren't in good shape and they're slowly getting better. I think partially that's because he just has a lot of money and a lot of that comes from Hollywood. But I think you're right, Ryan, that people just want to move on, forget COVID happened. They don't want to deal with, you know, a, a nasty recall fight after this last painful year, which it was, you know, more than a year at this point. So yeah, I mean, I think that's absolutely true. But I love the California uh, donation disclosures where disclosures, whereas Lee reported, you have to say, yeah, no, we were lobbying to become a central right. business. <laughs> it's like, right. we, that's straight up what we were doing at Paramount. Um, you know, Reed Hastings pouring $3 million into Gavin Newsom's campaign right now. 
I, listen, we don't know what. I'm sure Reed Hastings honestly does support Gavin Newsom as a Democrat and maybe as a friend. I have no idea. But obviously, there's also a relationship between Gavin Newsom being good to him and his industry and, uh, you know, Reed Hastings deciding to support him. So, I mean, I think it's it's just with Gavin Newsom, the French Laundry Dinner is obviously one of the, the clearest symbols, I think, of elite corruption that we have seen in years. I mean, it was glistening. It was too perfect. But then at the same time, when you dig deeper, it gets even worse. I mean, he was dining with lobbyists at a Michelin star restaurant against the COVID restrictions that he implemented that were killing small businesses. 40,000 had closed as of, I think, September, as I just read, according to Yelp. 40,000. That's like way higher than in the state of New York. Obviously, California is a big state. But come on, Gavin Newsom. Come on. I mean, it's just brazen when it comes to him. And I think he has enough money that he'll be fine. Yeah, and we'll see. Partisan preferences might just click back into effect yeah. in the recall. We'll find out. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what's on your radar next, Ryan. We'll be right back. <laughs> 